Hello, I have Abby here with me today. Hello. And we are going to talk about one of her favorite and one of my favorite biology lessons. We're going to talk about ecosystems. And for this lesson, we're going to talk specifically about the ocean ecosystem. But when you do your follow-up, you can choose whatever ecosystem you want to. Um, and while I tell this story today, I'm also going to draw a picture. So I'm going to switch our view so you can see my hands and see what I'm drawing. And then I want you to listen along the first time. And then if you want to replay the video and draw along with me, that would be great. Abby's going to be drawing along while I tell the story because she's heard it before. And then we'll show you what her picture looks like at the end. I want you to feel like you're, this is totally doable, even for those people who are scared of drawing and art. It's, it doesn't have to be perfect. You'll see that mine is not perfect. I'm going to be drawing in marker so you can see it. I recommend you doing it in colored pencil so that you can erase if you need to. Um, but for me to show you, pencil doesn't really show very well, so I'll be using markers. So hang on, let me switch our view. There we go. <laughs> okay, it's hard when you have two microphones and two speakers and trying to mute each one appropriately is a little challenging. Okay, so I hope that you can see this, the tabletop where I'll be drawing. Okay, so in this story I have to share with you, I want to talk to you about um, the parts of the system that aren't alive. In this system that we're going to talk about today, there's going to be some land. And I'm going to make a basin over here because there's also going to be some water. And you can see how drawing this with color pencil would be nice because you could do some shading in, whereas with marker, you can't really shade in. So here I have some land and some ocean and I have one more part of this ecosystem that has to make it, and that is the sunshine. Now, the sun, I'm gonna fill it in so you can see it. That marker is not beautiful for this kind of work. I will tell you that again, that marker makes it really challenging to make it beautiful because you can't shade or fill in, but I wanted you to be able to see my sun. There's my sun, and the sun has rays that are shining down. Okay, so these three parts of this ecosystem, the land and rocks and the water and the sun make up the non-living parts of the ecosystem. These parts are called the, um, <laughs> the abiotic, meaning not living part of the ecosystem. So we have rocks and soil and sand and we have water and we have the sun. Now, all of our ecosystems have these parts to it. We have the sun shining every day. We have whatever kind of land we have. We don't have an ocean where we live, but we have rivers and ponds and lakes. Okay, now living close to the surface of the, of the ocean are little tiny plants. And these little tiny plants are called phytoplankton. Now these phytoplankton get their energy from the sun because they're plants, they photosynthesize, maybe you've heard that word before, they photosynthesize. So they're using the heat and light from the sun to make their food. So these phytoplankton are getting their energy and their, their way of life from the sun. It's from the sun that these guys are living. Now also in this ecosystem, there are some little tiny life that live pretty close to the surface. They don't have to live quite as close to the surface. These ones here are zooplankton. Zoa means life and plankton. I actually don't know the root of plankton. That would be something we could look up. So the phytoplankton, phyto um, sounds like photo. It comes to us from light. So these phytoplankton get their energy from the light. These zooplankton get their energy from the phytoplankton. They eat the phytoplankton. Yum, yum. Now, as these phytoplankton are feeding the zooplankton, they're not the only things that live in the ocean. There are 
small fish that live in the ecosystem. Here's a small fish. And the small fish eat zooplankton. That's how they get their food and their nutrients. They eat the zooplankton. So those little fish get their energy from the zooplankton. But Abby, what else is in the ocean? We've got small fish, phytoplankton, and zooplankton. Bigger. Bigger fish. Okay, let's see. What color shall we make our bigger fish? Yours is going to be pink. Mine will be orange. So here we have a larger fish, and this fish eats that smaller fish. And we can add some detail to it if we want to. There's his fins and a little bit of character. If I was drawing this with colored pencil, I could give it a lot more detail, but that's what we got so far. Look, he's happy. It's hard to see that. He has a smiley face. He's saying that purple fish looks delish. Okay, so now this little orange fish is swimming around. Kind of looks like sushi. This little orange fish is swimming around and something happens. What's going to happen to our little orange fish? Eaten. It's going to be eaten. Let's say it gets eaten by this beautiful teal bigger fish. This is a sad story. Is it a sad story? This teal fish is sure happy. Look at his big smile. <laughs> he says, that orange fish looks delish, and he eats them up. So as you can imagine, because the ocean is full of all sorts of creatures, that something is going to eat this fish, too. It could be some sort of like a killer whale, it could be a shark, it could be an octopus, it could be anything, and you could draw it to be anything you want. I, I'm just going to say that this fish right here, this teal fish, is going to live a long, happy life and not get eaten. But just like we know, even the things that live long, happy lives eventually have to die. And so here's our... <laughs> There's his sad face. There's our dead fish. So eventually, everything lives its whole life and, start, and dies and then starts to decompose. There are microorganisms in the ocean that start to decompose and break down the parts of fish and other creatures when they die. And as these little pieces and particles are decomposed by the microorganism, they add to the water special nutrients that act kind of like fertilizer, but they're just nutrients to the water column. And you can see that that decomposing fish gives its nutrients from the microorganisms to the environment. Now, there's a special kind of creature that lives at the top of the ocean that gets its energy from the sun. And this special plant that lives at the top uses the heat and light from the sun and the nutrients from those microorganisms to grow and make more just like itself. And they eat, they get the nutrients from the, from the decomposing fish and they get nutrients from the sun. Now, there's another kind of life that lives right below the surface there, a little further down. Now, these little particles eat the phytoplankton. And so they eat the phytoplankton. And the phytoplankton live their life being happy little phyto, or zooplankton, I'm sorry. The zooplankton live their happy little plankton life until fish, like little purple fish, come along and eat them. I wonder if you're noticing something. I'm noticing something. Are you noticing something, Abby? Yes, I am. What are you noticing? I'm noticing that. It's repeating itself. It is repeating itself. It's a cycle, just like we talk about other cycles that repeat themselves. As we go around this cycle, the cycle, the players, the characters might be different in each story. I told you that maybe there was an, uh, a whale or a shark or a squid or something down here, one of the bigger animals. But the cycle just continues and continues because everything eats something and everything eventually dies and decomposes, and the cycle continues and continues. And so this is called an ecosystem. An ecosystem is made up of the abiotic, the non-living parts like the sun and the land and the water, 
and the biotic parts, which are that live in it. So I could add a ton of detail to this. I, in fact, I really enjoy adding rocks to my beach and clouds in my sky, but I'm going to leave this right here so that you guys have, you can be creative on your own. I don't want you to copy everything that I have done. I want to show you an example. So here's Abby's version of the ecosystem. She was drawing along as I was telling the story. So she was drawing along as I told the story and you can see that she had um, a little teal fish, ate the zooplankton and then a pink fish. Oh, it's kind of scary looking. Is it a fish? Yeah. Okay, that pink keyhole looking fish ate the teal fish and then this like super scary tooth thing. I'm not, do you know what that is? No. Oh, just a fish. Um, a, piranha. a piranha. Ooh, piranhas are river fish. Maybe this is a river ecosystem. Ate the pinky fish and then it, it died. Look at it, it's, its smile just turned upside down. It's still got its teeth. And she has the same cycle going on here that you saw with mine. And you can see that it doesn't have to be, it doesn't have to be perfect. It just has to represent what you want it to. Selena's also drawing along. Let me show you what she's got so far. She's nowhere near done, but um, but she popped in towards the end of the lesson and she wanted to draw too. And so you can see um, she hasn't, she start, she didn't start her ecosystem with way we did with our zooplankton and phytoplankton, but she'll get those in there. She started with her small fish and her bigger fish. And it looks like an orca had a delicious fish dinner. <laughs> so she's gonna keep working on her story too. Okay, so we together just drew an ocean ecosystem. There are ecosystems all over Earth. Let's, let's, I'm going to give you seven seconds to think of as many ecosystems as you can. Okay, Abby, what did you think of? A forest with deer. A forest with deer, okay. Um, how about a swamp? Um, Ants that eat the grass, and then a toad that eats the ants, and then a snake that eats the toad. Okay, hold on, hold on. So she's thinking like maybe a grassland, prairie? I don't know what she's thinking of there. I just noticed that you've got some funny lines in the background. I'm sorry if that's distracting to you. I don't know. It seems like everything's a little off-center today. Um, how about a rainforest? Ooh, uh, um. Coral reef? Reef would be. Oh, no, don't tell them. Oh, yeah. uh, we're, just we're just listing ecosystem. Right. Okay. Uh, desert. Oh, that would be hard. Tundra. Polar, polar ocean. Trench. Ooh, Selena says ocean trench. Those, those are pretty cool. That's a pretty cool ecosystem. Anywhere on earth is an ecosystem. Your backyard is an ecosystem. Our schoolyard is an ecosystem if they're not necessarily natural ecosystems because we've changed them, but there are plants and animals that live there. So think about, think about where you would like to explore more. You could learn more about the ocean. Maybe you're like, coral reefs sound really amazing, or I love Finding Nemo, so I've already read or seen the Great Barrier Reef, or I've watched a documentary. Maybe you already have one. Um, so there's lots of opportunities for follow-up or studying ecosystems. You can, um, actually we'll talk about it in your assignment, what you're going to do, because I think that each of you will have something different to do. Uh, it should start with picking your ecosystem and kind of giving it a sketch. But for some of you, fifth and sixth graders, I'm looking at you, uh, my expectation would be that maybe you do some research about it and write me a paragraph or two about your ecosystem. But we'll talk more about that in class. I hope you have a great day. This was a lot of fun. Ecosystems is one of our favorite works. And um, it's just, scary big fish. <laughs> yeah, you're a scary big fish. Uh, it's just a lot of fun to explore the different places on earth. We'll see you next time.